really the last class of compounds we have to talk about is carboxylic acids. And it's really not feasible, except under very specific conditions, to convert a carboxylic acid into any of the groups higher up on the reactivity ladder of carboxylic acid derivatives. The one exception is when we take advantage of equilibrium to do the reverse of ester hydrolysis. And this reaction is called Fischer esterification. It's really just acid catalyzed. It's really just acid catalyzed esterification, which is the reverse of ester hydrolysis. And so the way the reaction works is we start with a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, and these R groups do not have to match. In general, they don't. And we treat with aqueous acid, a catalytic amount of aqueous acid, with the removal of water. It's important to remove water so that we drive the reaction forward with Chatelier's principle in action. And so the reaction is reversible, and through some kind of trick with the experimental setup, like the use of a Dean-Stark apparatus, we remove water as it forms. The mechanism of Fischer esterification is the microscopic reverse of the acidic ester hydrolysis. So we start with the carboxylic acid, and as in all acid-catalyzed reactions, we protonate the carboxylic acid using the acid catalyst, and the most basic position is the carbonyl oxygen of the carboxylic acid. This generates a resonance stabilized cation, but one that is nonetheless a great electrophile at the central carbonyl carbon, and this is attacked by the nucleophile in an AD sub N elementary step. This gives a tetrahedral intermediate in which the alcohol has formed a bond to the carbonyl carbon, and we still have the two OH groups in the original protonated carboxylic acid intermediate. There are a couple of proton transfers. I'm not going to show these explicitly. All I'll say is that the proton transfers are not intramolecular. They usually involve passing proton back and forth from the solvent. But ultimately what happens is the placement of a proton on one of the OH groups. This sets up water as a good leaving group and sets up a situation where the OR group that was installed is going to stay there and water is going to act as a leaving group. And so the next step here is beta elimination of water. We're now at step five over here in the general scheme. And this gives something that's very similar looking to the product. In fact, it is the product just with an additional proton on what's going to be the ester carbonyl oxygen. We also have water around from the previous proton transfers, and we need to regenerate the catalyst still, and that happens through proton transfer back to water. This generates the neutral ester product and regenerates the catalyst. So this H3O plus molecule we've generated here can return to another acid molecule and restart the cycle. And although I've drawn forward arrows here, keep in mind that the entire process is reversible and we use two strategies to get around that. We can use an excess of the alcohol, excess reactant, drives the reaction forward, and we can remove water. And this too drives the reaction forward by removing a product. It's not drawn explicitly over here, but of course, water is a byproduct of this reaction. We see it being kicked off in this beta elimination step. And so removing that water drives the reaction toward the ester side. When done in reverse, by the way, this is ester hydrolysis. And in that case, we use an excess of water, still an acid catalyst, but what we end up with, because of Le Chatelier's principle, is the reactant side, the carboxylic acid and alcohol. So that's one way to form an ester from a carboxylic acid. And that occurs under acidic conditions, at least catalytic acid. Another strategy uses basic conditions and involves the use of a carboxylate. So we might, for example, treat a carboxylic acid with something that can deprotonate it completely. The simplest would be something like a carboxylic acid plus, say, sodium hydroxide. Hydroxide is a strong enough base to deprotonate the carboxylic acid completely, and we end up with a sodium carboxylate. And this is a decent nucleophile at the carboxylate oxygen, the anionic oxygen here. And so if we want to make an ester where the alkoxy group is appropriately substituted, really it needs to be primary or in some cases secondary, we can use an SN2 reaction to install that alkyl group. And the idea here is a simple SN2 process. The carboxylate is a nucleophile and using an alkyl halide or pseudo halide, here it's a chloride, we can install a primary alkyl group. And this is a nice 
straightforward way to make esters, it does have its limitations. It can only be used to make esters in which this alkoxy group is appropriately substituted, generally primary here, this carbon linked to oxygen. But if that's the case, this is a nice synthetic method for the synthesis of esters from carboxylic acids.